couple of months ago, I did a two-part tour of this music room. You guys had a bunch of questions that you left in the comments. In today's video, I picked 10 of those questions and I answer them. Check it out. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl, gear, and more. This first question comes from Gene Burroughs, who says, I would like to see your speakers, their setup, and your listening chair and position. Got a lot of questions there, Gene. So some of that is covered in part two of my music room video. I'll leave a link to both of those in the comments below. But uh, quickly, so my speakers here are uh, Fluence XL8 Towers. They are um, newer ones from the past year. In the next room, I have the previous generation, the Fluence XL7 Towers. I use those ones in my um, home theater. Um, I got the speakers sitting here on both sides of my desk against the wall. They're probably six inches out from the wall. The speakers are probably about seven feet apart and they're slightly towed in. I've been working at home for like 14 months now because of COVID. So honestly, it's not ideal, but I listen a lot while sitting right here at the desk with the speakers on the side while I'm working. But when I really want to listen and indulge in the music, I got this chair behind me, kind of push it into the middle of the room and I kind of sit facing the speakers. I recognize this is not the ideal setup for a music room in terms of speaker placement and and everything but you gotta you gotta do you gotta you gotta make best with what you have right make the best with what god gave you or the house you bought uh, this room is 10 feet by 10 feet and there's a lot of stuff in here so i've really tried to do my best to set everything up um, and to really maximize the space the best that i can so um there you go, that's my setup. This next question comes from, I don't wanna mess this pronunciation up, Corax. Corax writes, what's that cartridge you've got there? He's talking about the one on my uh, on my uh, Technics SL1200. He says, is it a Pickering V15? It is, it's a Pickering XV15 625E, which is a vintage classic cartridge from I don't even know when mine is from. I was gonna say, I think this particular one is from the late 70s, but I believe that these cartridges go back even further than that. And I've outfitted mine with an aftermarket stylus from Jico, J-I-C-O. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, these guys make premium aftermarket styli for cartridges. And that combination to my ears sounds fantastic. I purchased cheaper cartridges, a cheaper stylus for the Pickering in the past. And it just, it, it was lifeless. It didn't impress me much at all as getting ready to give up on the Pickering. But I thought, you know, I'm gonna invest in a good stylus and see what happens. I think the Jico is probably a couple hundred bucks, but it made all the difference. The cartridge itself I got for free. It was on a thrift store turntable I bought. Um, so really the overall investment was a couple hundred bucks, but sounds fantastic. Such a warm sounding cartridge with a really big sound stage. And it's got such a classic sound to it, if that makes any sense. So if you're looking for that sort of sound, I definitely recommend uh, seeking out the Pickering XV15. And also while you're at it, check out the aftermarket styli, styluses that Jico makes. Premium stuff and really, really good. All right, on the topic of cartridges, this next question comes from Jonathan Silva. And he says, do you prefer the Nagaoka MP110 or the Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge for the Fluence turntable? I listen mostly to rock, to metal and rock like you. I always mess up that pronunciation. I said Nagaoka, but I think it's actually like Nagaoka, something like that. I don't know. I know someone out there is gonna know better than me. It's funny because you see these words for years, but eventually when you do these videos, you have to actually say some of these words. It's like, oh my gosh, how the heck do, uh, do I say that? Anyway, so do I prefer the MP110 or the Ortofon 2M Blue for the Fluence? So he's talking about my Fluence RT85 turntable. And to be honest, the only um, cartridge stylus combo 
I've used on there is the Ortofon 2M Blue. I primarily use the Nag Nagalqua, whatever, the MP110 on my vintage Hitachi, Hitachi, and on, I have used it on my um, Techniques as well. They're two totally different cartridges. I would think both would sound good on the Fluence or a modern turntable like the Fluence, but again, they're completely different cartridges. Let me explain. The Nagaoka, Nagaoka, whatever, I'll call it the one, the MP110. The MP110 is much more of a classic, warm sounding cartridge. The Pickering I talked about earlier as well, they're both these really warm sounding cartridges. The Pickering I think is better than the MP110, but the MP110 for the price is an absolute workhorse, classic warm sounding cartridge. Whereas the Ortofon 2M Blue is in many respects the complete opposite. It is not a warm cartridge, at least to my ears and in my opinion, it is much more of a modern sounding cartridge. And by a modern sounding cartridge, I mean sort of what you have is what you get. There's no coloration. Oftentimes when you're talking about a warm sounding cartridge, it's coloring the sound. The Ortofon series, in particular the red and blue, which I'm most familiar with, really don't color the sound. What you have is what you get. So it's not overly warm, but it is fairly precise and detailed. Um, some people, I've heard them call it a dead cartridge, dead sounding cartridge in stylus because it doesn't have that warmth to it, but I totally disagree. It's got a large sound stage, and again, it's fairly accurate and it sounds good. So they're two different things, right? I like the more um, warm sounding stuff like the MP110 and the Pickering for sort of more of the analog, um, more of the music chord on analog, more of the stuff from the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Then we start getting more into the modern music, I prefer the Ortofon 2M Blue. So hope that makes sense, uh, Jonathan. They're both good and you just gotta kind of figure out what kind of sound you're going for. And then, um, you know, do some research too, see what other people are saying, and then kind of go with whatever your gut's telling you. All right, this next question from me, Barry. And me, Barry writes, "What? where did you get the LED lights and how much? So he's referring to seeing the back of my record shelves all the way around and over here, I got some lights there. That's from a strip of LED lights. And I just made a note here, I got them from Amazon. Um, you can get 16 feet for 20 bucks. They got longer ones as well. They're quite affordable and they come with a remote control. And with that remote control, you can change the color and you can customize the color, really any color you want. The, the sky is the limit. I basically use two colors. I use white colors like you see there today and that's for my Sunday videos and for the Friday night vinyl ones. It's more of a subdued atmosphere so I use the blue light but um, you can customize it and you can also make them flash and all sorts of crazy stuff I never used. Anyway, there you go. All right, so this next one from Mark. And Mark writes, all this time I thought the doll in the back of your room was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I just realized it was Frank. Does this look like, does this look like an American lawyer and jurist who served as an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1993 until her death in September 2020? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Anyway, the dog's barking, hold on. Okay, this next question from Kevin. Frank, did you give up on your project debut carbon deck? No, not at all. I love my project DC uh, debut carbon. It's probably, aside from my um, Technics, or techniques, depending on the, where in the world you're from. Aside from my SL1200, it's probably my favorite turntable. And obviously it's a, it's a modern day turntable, sort of in that $500 price range. And we compete with brands like um, like U-Turn uh, and Fluence and Riga. Um, in my opinion, it's superior to all of those. Um, the carbon fiber tone arm, um, beautiful. I've upgraded mine with an acrylic platter, uh, my upgraded cartridge and the speed box. Offers fantastic bang for your buck. I've had it for seven or eight years. Speed is still rock steady to this day. I've never had a single issue with it. So I do have it. I mean, I just got, it's a good problem to have. I have five, six, seven turntables. I kind of rotate them out, but uh, that turntable is near and dear, man. I'm hanging on to it. And I highly recommend the uh, Project Debut Carbon for anyone out there looking for a turntable kind of in that price range. 
All right, this next question from Al M. Your room is really nicely organized. It's so hard not to pack rat stuff, as evidenced by so many other YouTube channels. Do you have an overflow room? This is the whole thing. I've really been trying to contain everything in this 10 foot by 10 foot space, and that is obviously a challenge. Uh, those of you who have been around for a while know that I occasionally do a purge of the record collection. I purged a couple hundred records last year. Um, just the stuff I wasn't going to listen to again or had the records I had in Getting, had not been getting a lot of love and that was part of my attempt to keep everything in this space. I mean that said in the next room I do have an overflow bin with probably 50 records or so and those ones they may get purged. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet. And in terms of gear I got setups throughout the house. I got something upstairs in the family room and the next room here which I'll show you in a video someday is sort of the home theater room but for the most part there's really not much of an overflow and kind of this is what I have and this is what I have to live with and I try to make the best of it and make everything kind of fit in here and, and kind of make sense so hopefully that makes sense. User 181 those are nice looking record and CD shelves in your music room thank you. Who makes them? Are they custom built? No they are not. Uh, not to sound like an Ikea commercial but most of the storage in this room is from Ikea. The white record shelves behind me are a mixture of Ikea Expedite or Ex Expedite expedite and expedite which have since been discontinued and then the clax units here so it's kind of a mishmash of those i have my cd uh shelves here and those are nedby again ikea unfortunately they have also been discontinued and the shelves here in front of me um, where i display records those are actually picture ledges and those are from ikea as well and again discontinued they sell shorter ones now not quite the same i bought these ones probably about a decade ago go or more. They work really well. Uh, if there is a store in your neck of the woods called Yisk, J-Y-S-K, they do sell very similar ones to those as well and they're quite cheap. So that's what I do for storage. Again, not to sound like an Ikea commercial, but it's mostly from Ikea. Tom Kershaw. You sorted Alice Cooper as Cooper Alice, but you don't sort Priest Judas. Alice should be in the A section. So Tom is talking about when I showed how I sort my records, and this is this is nerdy stuff, man. And I'm a nerd, so I like it. And this is the old debate about where do you put Alice Cooper on your record shelves? Because originally it was the Alice Cooper Band, right? The singer was Vincent Fernier, and then over time. Alice Cooper became a solo artist and took the name with him. So um, the dedicated folks will argue that Alice Cooper should be under A, and I put Alice Cooper under C for Cooper Alice. Um, and he's saying, well, I don't put Priest Judas. But I mean, my logic behind it is Alice has been a solo artist longer than the Alice Cooper band was around, so I opted to put Alice Cooper under C. I don't think A is wrong. It's kind of whatever uh, you feel comfortable with. All right, Frank. Karabi Crew writes, very cool. I love the cassette drawers. Old school. May I ask where you got the dividers for your vinyl? So I got little plastic dividers between all my records. I bought those. Well, my wife bought them for me again, probably about a decade ago. Online from Bags Unlimited. I think these are the 0.03 inch thickness ones. Um, I can't remember, but they got some good stuff. If you're looking for record dividers and whatnot, check out Bags Unlimited. I have a lettering on mine that was just by like a homemade letter machine or label or whatever you want to call it. And finally, well, I said 10 questions. Here's 11, a bonus from Adam, Adam, Adam Unholy. How many 12 inch LPs do you own? Um, I have just under 1400 and uh, it's not a huge collection compared to some I've seen out there, but uh, it's a good size for me. It's still manageable. I've listened to all those records. I don't have an overflow bin with albums I haven't listened to. Everything that comes in gets played. And if it doesn't, then as I said earlier, I do that purge. So, um, you know, I don't imagine it ever having like 3,000 records. I couldn't, I couldn't manage that. So 1,400 and uh, I have no goal. We'll kind of see how it goes. And I still love buying new releases and new albums. The collection is always growing, but that's where it is at right now. All right, that is today's little Q&A session. I hope you dug it. If you did, I appreciate a quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Otherwise, dear 33ers, I hope each and every one of you has a fantastic week. Until next time, keep
keep on spinning.